apologize for being late. The number a couple meetings ran along, so sorry Tad was the entertainment. That's the best we could do. So. <laughs> but, really bad. Yeah. We can work on that next time. Yeah. David? Uh, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Just what was your message to the team yesterday and then again today when you talked to them coming off of a game like that? Um, well, a number of things. Obviously, I addressed the performance. Um, just the things that, you know, really the basics are, our basics are not in order. Uh, you know, I think just like anything, you know, and it's stating the obvious, starts with the turnover ratio. Uh, I, I, you know, like fundamentals of football are, you know, part of your everyday existence in this game. And, you know, we, we cannot function at, at, at where we are, you know, as far as the number of giveaways and, and the lack of takeaways. So, you know, so I just really, you know, kept it about football and, you know, the technique fundamentals and how you improve that and the focus with that. Um, you know, we did the number of moving parts, you know, we need, we need to, regardless of that, uh, we need to be more connected, you know, more uniform. So just, just, just kept it about just the things that, you know, we, we did do, didn't do, and, you know, just make sure the direction was clear and the direction we're going. And, and along with that, when you, when you have a, a break after a performance like that and everyone's not here in the building to kind of focus on what you need to do, th is that any concern at all as far as them getting away and, and not being here to work on what you're talking about? And well, I mean, you know, years ago you could practice, you know, during this week, but it's, you know, the, the schedule's the schedule. So, I mean, that's really not even, you know, to go there. But I, I, I don't think anybody would – Want a chance to go out and work on some of the things that that, that we need to do very well. I think that's human nature. That's you know that's part of being in the team. It's part part of being the, the competitors. Uh, so it makes definitely makes for a longer week in the area of self scout and, and the things that I've already had planned. So I mean you always, I know I do personally. You know, I've always kind of pushed things off and try to chart a plan. Whether it's you know concept variation that you're trying to build off of the things you've done. You know hopefully you're. You're uh, building off of things you've done very well. So you know, right right now we we got to make sure we're really you know focused and tight as far as you know, the things the way people are attacking us uh, week in and week out. I mean, for for example, you know line movement, you know versus our offensive line, we've been seeing that you know steadily since week one. You know, understandably, you know starting two rookies. So um, how can we? Better prepare our players in season, you know, with that work. I mean, we got a ton of work in the training camp format uh, with our defense. So how how do we carry that over, you know, next week and and help those guys and make sure that they're getting more live work. So th th those are the kind of things that we'll be focused on. I know I'll be focused on, you know, because it's all about solutions right now. It's it's not about you know going backwards and uh, we evaluate every day. So this is really building uh, clarity and. Make sure our solutions are how we're going to line up. You know, we're not we're not going to recreate the wheel. We need to we need to get our fundamentals and techniques. You know, we need to get the basics going and playing it. You know, it'll help us play at a higher rate. And with that, you play with more confidence and play faster and and you know all those things. So, Clarence, they lost City Dallas, and maybe it's connected to that uh, beyond the turnovers and execution issues. Uh, a lot of pundits talked about the toughness or lack of toughness and. Maybe playing soft at times. I don't know. Did you see that on tape? I think the biggest thing is, um, yeah, I think you got to be real careful uh, when you when, when you use the word soft, uh, particularly in, the, in in this game at this level. Uh, they clearly playing faster than we were. Uh, there's no doubt about it. They, they they played with more confidence as the game went on. Um, so, and that's to me comes comes to, comes goes back to, you know the um, you know the belief in the details. You know the trust. Um, not being as connected, you know, we we had some moving pieces. I think some guys start guessing, you know, trying to make plays instead of playing the playing the call. Um, there, there was way too much of that. I think some guys on offense were were pressing, trying to make plays. Um, so we had some situations up front uh, that they, you know, they got after us on, on both sides of the line, on bo both both lines of scrimmage. So that's uh, that. I think it was more of that is. Is was uh, a big part of our evaluation. Was the effort there? Yeah, I mean, define effort. I mean, yeah, I mean, you look at GPS and numbers, things like that. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it's more about playing fast and playing faster than the other guy, and you're being more efficient and 
you know, in, in all 11 coordinated, and uh, they played very well, and we did not. Mike Todd Archer with ESPN. When you look at the uh, lopsided loss, the, the way that you had it, do you worry about your team's mental state, uh, or is it just one game? I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's it's part of a, it, uh, you know, it's part of the path. And I tell you what, the, you know, the mo the moment um, that, you know, when you, you have a chance to step back and and um, you know re really look at everything, you know, I, I think it's important for all of us, and this is part of the message to the team is. You know, I gave them a number of questions um, today as far as things to think about, make sure that they are reflecting, make sure they are looking in the mirror, and, and you know, just make sure you're filling in the, filling the blanks uh, because of, you know, why are we on this seven flow? You know, why, 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 why do we perform um, seven days ago the way we performed at one o'clock in the morning and then come home and perform the way we did? Um, so. Those are the kind of things we got to work focus on. They're an excellent football team. They're playing very well, and I give them I give them the credit. But at the end of the day, if we totally don't believe it's about us, and it'll always be about us, and play to who we are, what we do, how we do it, then we're not going to get to where we want to go. And I believe we will. And I think this is a opportunity that uh, we relish. I know I relish it, um, and and I, and I think they do too. So this is a this is a place uh, that. A lot of good can come out of it, and been here before, and I think this is a really good opportunity for our, for our leadership. I think it's an excellent opportunity for our young guys to continue to play. It's an excellent opportunity for these guys to build off of some of the things they have done well, and uh, because this will pay forward. In, in my experience, it always has. When you play young players this much, and you play this many different players this much, I think the long game definitely has a, a you know has a chance to be very bright. When you say you've been here before, what got you out of it? Was it one play, one game, one week, one practice? Well, I think it's been a hard truce. You know, playing, playing. You know, maybe, maybe we have to take a hard look at the way we played that game. You know, so that's what we've done as a staff. You know, did we did we try to get into a sprint with a car that was going faster than we were? You know, that, that we couldn't keep up with. You know, so uh, so you just all those things. So I, I think you have to. Look at all that, uh, reassess. You know, it'll always start with the health of the team when they get back, and we'll have a good plan to go out there in San Francisco and get that win. John Machado with the Athletic. It seems like it'd be tough to get the offense to where you want it to be unless you guys get a good running game. What gives you confidence that you can get the running game to where you want it to be? Uh, continuity and touches. I, I think that, that you know the move. You know, we had you know Tyler Guyton goes down, so you make two moves that you know for one for one player. Um, sometimes that it has a bigger effect than you think it is, think it would. Uh, I think that's part of it, you know. Um, so, you know, that's where we have to take a hard look at. We got to see where Tyler is, you know, Guyton as far as his health, also with TJ, and uh, you know, give Tyler Smith some clarity. You know, I think the fact that him and Zach playing next to Cooper, you know, every single day throughout the spring, you know, or you know, spring and more importantly, camp. Uh, I felt like we were our consistency was, was was getting better. I thought the Pittsburgh game was a really good illustration of that, particularly in the second half. You know, when you saw the run game adjustments that were made, particularly in the tight inside zones. So you know, now you make you know make those moves. So those that's what we got to take a hard look at. So just you know maybe you know just go back to you know Tyler Guyton or you know um, you know get more reps and you know make make a decision there. So. I think we can definitely tighten that up. And do you expect Micah Parsons to be back for the San Francisco game? Don't know. This big week for him. Yeah, this big week for him. So he's making progress. Yeah. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. You talk about the ebbs and flows. How much does practice impact some of that at times? What, what? You see the ebbs and flows of a game in, in, in the season. How much are you practicing? Are you up and down on how you practice? And maybe is that impacting? So much structure of practice, yeah, or, or how you practice in general? Um, I'm still not sure you're inconsistently, and that's no, also I, I think that I mean this team. I mean, just like I told him this today, I said, I can't believe everything you read, in particular when it comes to numbers. Uh, you know, if you look at comparables from the way the team practices on a GPS scale, this team is better conditioned than 22 and 23 as far as workload capacity. That's what the numbers tell you. But the efficiency and the productivity in the areas of fundamentals and technique, we, we are not where we were 
this time last year. That, that's very evident to me as far as how I evaluate the practice every day. So that's where we got to make sure the energy is the intention of practice and the specifics of where the energy is being displaced. And part of that is youth. You know, part of that is an experience with the guy that's playing next year. You know, we, we've had a number of veterans show up here, you know, later. So we just got to keep, we got to keep working. I mean, that's, that's, that's the answer and we're going to keep working. With Guyton, with Guyton, did something happen in practice on Saturday that prompted you to say he, he can't go? No, nah, he's just kind of where, where he was at all week. You know, he, he, he just, um, he's not 100%. So. Nick Harris, Fulbrook, Star Telegram, kind of to that same point. Dak had said last night that guys can't just show up on Sundays. So what's kind of your message as far as increasing intention throughout the week? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think part of that's frustration with, you know, with, with, with the game. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've done this a long time. This, this team's practice is hard. I mean, in practice, there's a difference between practicing hard and practicing well, you know. So they practice hard. We're not practicing well enough. So I, I think that's probably part of it. I, I would think I haven't talked to him specifically about that comment, but that, I think that's part of. I would think that's part of what he was saying. And we saw Dad kind of flex his finger yesterday. He had it taped up uh, after the game. Is there any concerns there? No, not, not, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Todd. Saad, he's the athletic. Mike, with uh, some of the issues tackling yesterday, uh, especially with some of your top players in your secondary, mm -hmm. how do you go about addressing that with them and then fixing it? Well, it's actually, frankly, been a focus, you know, at a high focus here the last couple of weeks. Thought I got a little better in Pittsburgh, but, uh, you know, we have team fundamental drills. Uh, you know, we, there's, there's three different variations uh, to, that, to that period. Um, and for the first time, we've, you know, all three of them were tackling drills, so we're just we're working it more. Um, you know the footwork, um, the, you know the fits, those types of things, the ball extraction. So um, that's part of what I've been talking about. The fundamental fundamentals and techniques are we're not where we need to be. For guys in the secondary, though, is that something that's more about how much do you want to get in there and get your nose dirty and and make that versus avoiding the confrontation in that? Oh, I think it's yeah. You know, it starts starts with the being where you're supposed to be, having your eyes where they're supposed to be. Um, and then using proper footwork, you know, the, you know, the approach, long stride, short stride, all, all those things coming in there. Yeah, definitely. So that's, that's why, you know, particularly if you're in shells, you work the drills a certain way when we don't live tackle on Thursdays. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's why, you, that's why we drill it. Scott. Skyler Dixon with DAP. How do you tune out the noise about your job security? Is it hard? Is it easy? Uh, I, th I, I think it's just part of the business, you know, and that's, and that's, when, when people ask me about really anything with the team, part of working here, um, it's it's part of the business. And did you catch what uh, Dak had to say about you last night? Pretty strong words of support. And how do you react when your quarterback says that? Well, I, th I think it shows um, you know how he feels, and I think it's, it speaks to our relationship. But yeah, I mean, support is a nice thing. I wish you'd do more of it. So. <laughs> Aaron. Uh, Aaron Kaslow's Lone Star Live. Uh, there was a few PFF and some other grading sites that Zach Martin didn't have his best game on Sunday. How, how do you evaluate where he's at uh, this year? Yeah, I mean, um, I didn't have my best game. You know, none, none of us played well. There, I'm trying to think if there was a winning grade on our on our analytics. So, um, yeah, we, did, we, we, we didn't perform very well. There you go. Uh, Joe Boyd, All City Dallas. Um, we've talked a lot about turnovers, only five so far for you guys at four so far. Is there a schematic remedy to that? Is it just guys making plays? How do you kind of look at trying to increase turnovers? No, I think it you know, comes down to, you know, once again, I mean, we, you're talking about line assignment and, and, and those types of things, and, and I know we do have a scheme change, but at the end of the day, the, you know, the pursuit and finish, um, that's, you know, I'm not trying to be a broken record here, but that's what I'm talking about. That, those are the fundamentals. The techniques uh, that we, you know, the intent of practice, we we need to stay on it. We we've been very good taking care of it and taking it away, um, and and we're definitely at a place that I don't I, I don't recall being, you know, w with the numbers. So um, we just we got to we got to keep working at it. Garrett, Garrett, put out CBS Sports. Mike, you talked about wanting to build off of things. Rico Dowdle at his best game. Pittsburgh, and he had just one carry in the first quarter when it was still a seven-three game. Finished with five. Sort of what goes into that, and then oh wow, the seven on third down is a big part of that, you know. And uh, I think the, 
you know, starting off at the first play, um, you know, just some of the penetration we had here. Not clearly not a reflection of him. I actually thought he did play well uh, with his limited touches, but he he needs he definitely needs to touch the ball more, without a doubt. Ed, Ed Werder, WFAA. Uh, you were in a similar predicament offensively going into the bye last year, and then came out of that a completely different team, won six of your next seven games. Does did. Did anything that you did during that time, the success you had, apply now in terms of I don't know, creating buy-in or ideas you could implement? Well, I, I would say the biggest thing I, I felt that when we turned that corner last year was the complimentary. For, if you go look at those games, um, you look at the Pittsburgh game, you know we um, we know how to play complimentary football, and, and we haven't you know we really haven't done it. You know we we started out there in Cleveland in the first half, but uh, not in the second half. Um, I thought for a lot of the game in New York we had it, but you know our complimentary you know formula production is is not there. So that was that was the biggest emphasis coming out of the bye last year, and definitely will be again this year. Tom, um, Mike Dak has uh, three red zone turnovers in the last two games. For, I think he only had two red zone interceptions all of last year. How do you explain the mistakes? When you, I mean, he's a guy who knows better in some situations, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think you know, red zone and third down is, you know, is, is uh, has been really way too up and down. Um, so, and, and it's the details. Uh, it, it always is. So you know, it starts with the, you know, the protection, the footwork, you know, the route detail. So, those are things we need to definitely be better at. We need to we need to spend more time on red zone. That's one of the things that, frankly, I wrote down a couple of weeks ago because it's uh, we're not where we need to be. And it manifested yesterday. And then you, you, I don't know if you were asked after the game about the fourth down decision to go for it uh, there. Did you, was that just a jump start the team kind of thing, or you knew possessions were going to be an, an important part of the game at that yeah, point? Yeah, I, I felt like, you know, the, the, the momentum of the game was was moving, you know, faster away from us than, than obviously I would like, you know, and I, I thought that was a momentum opportunity for us. He brought up Zach Barton, and you talked last night about the offensive line issues. You know, can be affected. Did you anticipate the struggles you guys have with the offensive line? Obviously, I mean, at the beginning, I know you knew coming in, you have some young guys, but it's kind of pre prevented you guys from getting anything going on offense. I'm not sure you asked me. Just the the anticipate because issue, with two rookies, or no, that they would take this long to to really get mature, get things going for you guys to really sustain some things offensively. I don't know how you guys evaluated that going in. We talk, you know, talking about Zach struggling as well. Going into the season or into the game? Into the season. Um, I, I think well. just, you know, if I recall, we talked about this at training camp. Is you know, that was part of the reason why, you know, we wanted to make that decision on who the five were going to be. You know, and Tyler Guyton, you know, missed a, a, a bunch of time there with the with his illness because that, that that that's one of your biggest decisions as a head coach, frankly, in, in, in personnel because that, that those five guys – you know, playing together, particularly practicing together every day, it's it's huge. I mean, you don't you don't get those reps back. So, um, but yeah, so it it probably happened a little later. You know, you know, Cooper. You know, it's a decision with you know Cooper that we made at that time over Brock. So, um, but yeah, I, I you know, you know, like I told Tyler you know last week, I said you, you got to practice every day. You you're, you're not going to get to where you want to be, and because it's all about those five linemen. You know, getting out there every single day and getting those reps. So when, when that doesn't happen, it it, it it can be bumpy, and and that's what we're going through right now. You talk about the running game not getting it going. How much is the problems up front impacting the running game, and also impacting Dak's ability to? to be and, uh, it all fits together. I mean, our, our run blocking unit and our pass protection unit did did not win yesterday. So it, it it's all tied together. What does this week look like for you personally? Um, just I'll, I'll be here working. You know, it's a good chance to take kids to school, maybe uh, catch some volleyball. But yeah, I got a little more work today than I thought I was gonna have. So I'll be here. I, Todd asked about the red zone turnovers, but just over the last couple of weeks, Dak in general, the turnovers are piling up a little bit. How, how do you think he's playing? Is it a little more of maybe what's happening around him, or is he just not playing? Well, well? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, and, and every quarterback knows that you got to take care of the football. You touch the, you touch it every, every snap. It's it's your number one priority uh, for responsibility. So you know, I mean, no one gets that or, or takes that responsibility, 
as serious as Dak. So, yeah, I mean, these, these conversations are, are daily. Um, and we'll just keep emphasizing, keep working. So. All righty. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you.